Hey guys, uh, we're going to do a mixture of things here. Again, I'm kind of liking these compound tutorials where we get to learn a ton of stuff. So we're in a situation where we're uploading products to the eBay marketplace, but eBay requires images to be at least 500 pixels. You've probably had situations in your career where you've had to make images a certain size. But in this case, we've got over a thousand images, and a lot of them are the wrong size. They're too small. Well, we don't want to just upscale a bunch of images, right? That looks that looks shitty. What we do want to do, though, because we don't want to go back and take all new pictures right now, we will do that. That's the right thing to do. For now, we want to at least hit the minimum photo requirements. So what we're going to do is we're going to add white padding to all of our images, and we're going to add pad. Well, we're going to add white padding because most of our images are on white backgrounds anyway, and so we're just going to add padding to it so the image doesn't get stretched and it fits. So let's do that. Uh, the other trick that we're going to do and we're going to learn here is we're going to do this on an Ajax basis. As in, I need to monitor the progress. For a thousand images, I don't want the PHP process to just freaking run long. So let's get started. So we're going to have a PHP script here, and we're going to do two things. If is set underscore post ID, so we're going to check for an ID posted else. So let me write what this is. This is normal page load, and this is posted to this page. Like this is like we're gonna run our process. And this is gonna die if we're in here. Actually it's gonna exit. Exit. This is not gonna exit because we wanted to hit some HTML. So what's our HTML gonna look like? Well a couple things. I'm gonna paste this little group lid in here. This is gonna haste basically jQuery. Close our jQuery. Close our script. Do -do -do -do. Close our head and close our HTML. Okay, so what do I mean by this Ajax thing? Basically, I want a button, and when I hit that button, I want my I want to take one ID at a time and start doing it and start doing my thing. So first of all, we need to get a crap ton of IDs. So that's what this is going to be. This is get a crap ton of IDs. Okay. So what is sorry IDs? So I'm going to let you I'm going to have you guys ignore the context at which I'm uh, actually kind of talking about and just kind of focus on the concept. So I'm going to quickly require some stuff in the beginning. So first things first, at the very top of the file we're going to include some shit. This is our, sorry for cursing so much, I don't know why I'm cursing so much right now. Uh, our beginning, our init stuff. Okay, so this is basically, I want to see errors, I want to see errors, and this is don't solve a script if it needs to, and then this is basically like my admin functions and stuff that I'm using. I'm not in any kind of MVC right now. This is kind of a one-off PHP script, so I'm just kind of bringing in some functions. One of those functions is query multi, which basically just does a MySQL query and returns a multi-dimensional array. So that's what this is. ID is equals query multi, select ID from skew images. So skew images is a database I have that has a bunch of images in it, and uh, they're probably too small, but a bunch of IDs. And then what we're going to do in, in, in here is outside of the script, outside of the, the jQuery, I should say, actually inside the jQuery, because we want to wait, we're going to basically say IDs, and notice I'm not saying var, because I want it to be global, because this is a one-off script, it doesn't matter, don't yell at me. We're going to do, and this is going to be kind of a secret thing, we're actually going to use PHP and store it as a JavaScript, so equals JSON encode, okay, follow me here, IDs, okay, like that. I know this is a little crazy, but this is really cool. If you just print JSON encoded stuff on the page and store it as a variable to JavaScript, it works. It's really cool. You should use it. Don't get crazy though. Uh, so if I save this and refresh the page here, if I type in IDs, boom, array 1154. Literally, here's all my IDs. And you want to see what that looks like on the page? Ah! But it works. It works really well. Now I have an array of IDs, which is awesome. So what are we going to do with that array of IDs? Well, we're going to run a function. We're going to run an Ajax call, I should say. So let's write our Ajax call. So basically, we're going to say dollar sign a post, and then we're going to post to this current page. So I'm just going to write the name of this page, which is uh, resize images.php. Right. And then we're just going to uh, pass it the ID, which is so we actually need to be looping through IDs first, right? So obviously we need to loop. So, well, okay. You know what? I'm, I was trying to make a shortcut for you, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Let me just write it out. So function update. This has to be a recursive function. After the Ajax is complete, it needs to be a call a function of doing itself. So this is how we do it. Function update. 
if ids.length, if we have any more ids left, then we will do our ajax. So we're going to say var item equals um, ids.shift. So ids is an array. We're going to take the first thing off the array, shift it. We're going to shift the first thing off the array and store it as our item. Okay? We could also say var id, which probably makes more sense. Now we're going to do our ajax, dollar sign to post, which is resize images.php. We're going to say id, id, that's our data packet. And then we're going to say parentheses.done function, and that takes in a message coming back from the ajax. I should not have written this parenthesis there. Cool, and this takes JSON coming back. Actually, we don't know that for sure. Let's just delete that. So, what happens when we're done? Well, let's just console.log our message. That's it. And it might be helpful to also log out before that IDs at length to tell us how many more we have left than our message. Following that, we will call the update function again. The update function is very self-aware. It knows about this IDs. See here, IDs. It knows how to shift a new one each time. Very, very simple. So it'll keep shifting and keep calling itself, and it'll keep shifting. It's very shifty. But as soon as there's no length left, there's no more to shift. It's that simple. It's just going to keep calling itself. No big deal. We need a button, though. Resize images. And then let's give ourselves a click on the button so we can start this process. So clicking go will call the update function, which again is just going just gonna to do its thing over and over again. So just for the instance, we're going to appear in, the, in our catch. We're going to say echo underscore post ID. Let's take a look what happens. This should just keep, this should just be boom, 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 boom. And actually, let's just do a sleep, like one, so it doesn't get crazy. So it's going to sleep PHP. It's going to one second, one second, one second. So boom, and refresh. Resize. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. You get the idea. There's 1,145 left, etc. You get the idea. So now we've got a really cool, like, boom, 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 boom thing going on. It's a really great way to do long running tasks. It's a very small script, as you can see here. This is a really cool little script. I use this a lot to do long running large tasks. Okay? So let's actually write what we came here to do. So I'm going to, again, kind of ignore my context. First, I'm going to I'm going to store my ID in a variable. So ID equals uh, underscore post ID. You should probably do a validation check on the ID here. I'm not going to because I'm doing a video. Uh, get the ID. OK, so this is your job. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the image from the database based on the ID. Again, uh, I'm just going to post some SQL here. But um, you do however you want to do it. Uh, basically, I'm, base I'm selecting the source image and the SKU, the product SKU. I'm also selecting the SKU ID, which links back on a join to the SKU table. And I'm saying where ID equals ID. So I'm just getting the image. Uh, uh, because I'm using query multi, it's a multi-dimensional array, even though I'm getting one item. So I'm actually going to say image equals image zero. It kind of doesn't have anything to do with the tutorial. Next thing, I'm going to store some variables. I'm going to store uh, source, which is equal to image, source image. Now, in order to figure out the dimension, i got to check the dimensions of the picture. So to do that, I'm going to use data equals get image size, get image size of our source, just like that. Get image size is a function in PHP available to you to check things about an image. Let's save that and check what that is. I'm not going to sleep because this is going to take a minute. This call takes a second to take. So let's see what we get. We get nothing. We get no results back from this. So that's bad. So let's check. Let's just do... Oh, well, that's because we're not echoing anything out. So let's, let's fix that situation. So here, instead of just exit, we're actually going to set JSON as the content type and echo JSON encode my data. So now I'm actually echoing stuff out to the page, to this message variable right there. I'm going to save, refresh. Now, boom, boom, boom. You can see 0 is 451, 1 is 226, 2 is 2, 3 is width, height, bits, 8. What's important here is this. 0 is the width, and 1 is the height. That's the important thing. Okay, It's really cool that we can do this. Let's just refresh before things get crazy. So I know now that we can get that. So let's actually just store that. Width equals data 0, as you saw, 
and height equals data 1, as you saw. So we only want to resize an image for eBay if one of the sides, or actually if, if either of the sides is not greater than 500. Either of the sides. So the biggest side needs to be at least 500. So if the biggest side, so if the max of width and height is at least 500 pixels, we get a problem. If it's less than 500, we get a problem. What's, what are we going to do with a problem? Well, let's just first check that we get it right. So let's just say here, data equals, well, let's just say data problem equals true. I'm just going to add on to the data so we can take a look at it. So I'll refresh it, and let's see what we got. Problem true. Neither of these sides are greater than 500 pixels. Let's check, OK, problem, problem, problem. This one, 800, 600. These are greater than 500, no problem. Here's a problem. So you can see we're able to tell that we've got a problem where neither of our sides are greater than 500 pixels. So what's the next step? Well, now that we discovered we have a problem, at this point, we need to actually change the image. So first thing is we're going to need a unique image name to save our images to. That's going to be our skew, in my case, plus a dash, and then time. It's just a random time number. Okay. Now we need to do... And you know what? I'm not going to type this, honestly, because I copied it from the internet, so I'm not going to act like I wrote it. This is a shell script using image magic. To install image magic, just look up PHP image magic, and you can install it in your command line up here very easily. All I'm going to do, and here's what I wrote, convert dash define jpeg colon size equals our width and height. This is our source width and height. I'm using curly braces because otherwise I'd have to escape out of my string. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Our source, which actually can be a remote URL, dash thumbnail, 600 by 600 with a bracket. So 600 by 600 is my target. Well, why am I doing 600 not 500? Just because I just want to be safe. I'm using 600 instead of 500. No big deal. The bracket basically says, resize the side that needs to be resized. That's what the bracket's telling it. Background white, gravity center, meaning it's going to add the padding from the center outward. If you wanted to add it from the top, you could say left or right or top center. Then here's the padding. We're going to extend to 600 by 600. Okay, that's the, the padding part. And I'm going to store that on my server in slash var slash ww slash images slash temp my name dot jpeg two greater than and one pushes the output of this statement to a variable that I'm not setting, so this actually doesn't doesn't matter at all. Ignore that. If it works, an image is created. My next step is to store what that image was right here. Data is my server slash temp slash the name that I created and my JPEG. That's my full path, which I'm saving to the database. To save to the database, first I will delete the image that I currently have there. I'm going to be replacing it. Then I'll use my save function, which basically does a MySQL insert. I'm going to save my source image. I'm going to save my SKU ID that I needed. And I'm going to save that to the SKU images table. I'm basically just replacing the same freaking thing. This is the cool part. You can kind of ignore this part. If the height and width were fine, let's just say data equals everything was fine. Okay. Also, Let's just do this to limit 5, just so we can get an idea. Actually, we'll do limit 10, just so we don't go crazy. So let's save, let's refresh, and let's hit resize. And you can see, we are now getting URLs. There's 6 left, 5 left, 4 left, 3 left, 2 left, 1 left, done. Only 3 of them had to be changed. If we click on the URL, there is our image. And as you can see, if I can, you can kind of see as I float through here. It is a padding, padding ding image here. Actually, I can save image as, downloads, I can open it, and you can see here how it is a, well, it's stretching it, but it's a 600 by 600 image tools, just size. It's 600 by 600 with white padding. That's there, there you go, that's the full size. So as you can see, it had padded our image properly, resized it, did not hurt the image itself, and with that cool technique, we were able to do 
that that quickly. I could now let this run for a thousand items, go walk away, come back.